Hey everyone, Nathan here from PH Studios. This tutorial is for XNA and we are going to start the networking series tonight. Now for the first tutorial of this series, I just want to introduce you to the relay server and introduce you to the concepts of networking. Now I'm not going to go that far into technical uh, networking technical terms, but I will give you a brief overview on what we are going to do and why we are going to do what we're going to do. Okay, so there's two ways we could do networking, two primary ways we can do networking. Uh, most of the time you've heard games use P2P, peer-to-peer -peer networking. These are you connect to another computer and that's your network. You just have peer-to-peer. The other way is to have an actual server, and the server will communicate with one client to another client. And that server can do anything it wants. It can just relay messages, or it can actually do something in between the communications. Uh, so for this whole series, we're going to use a relay server. Now this server is already built. We do not have to worry about building a relay server, so we could just go into the game and actually coding a game. So what is a relay server? A relay server takes whatever client A wants to send to client B. So client A is connected to server. Client B is connected to server. They do not see each other. So client A says, I have moved, so send my new ship coordinates or player coordinates to the server. Now the server receives that and depending on the settings it will send all that information to client B. So client A sends its new coordinates to server and server sends that to client B. Now this code here, this is just the relay server, this code here was developed by myself a long time ago for a uh, networking XNA tutorial, ne networking XNA game that I had to do for a class. The class was in make a networking game, and I decided to use XNA since that was my uh, I was most familiar with it. I didn't want to go into Java, and since I didn't know anything about it at the time. So I created an XNA networking game. It was just a simple space shooter, a uh, player at the bottom, enemy at the top, and one person shot the other person. And yeah, it was just a cool networking game. So this was a server that I just copied and pasted the code here, and I expanded on it. Now, I expanded on it to give the person downloading it the freedom to do whatever they wanted to do. At the time that the server was originally created, what I mentioned before was all the server did was just take what you sent to the other clients. Now it was built for two people, which is what we're going to start out with in this series because it's much easier. So when I expanded on this, I figured what would be more interesting to have a sort of a feature list. How can I expand on this? So since we're going to start with two people, this feature is not really that important right now, but it will be later on. One of the features I added was whenever somebody sends some information to the server, that server embeds the IP address and server ID of the person that sent it into the original message message and it packages that combination up and it sends it to everybody else so if you have a four player multiplayer game you know who sent that message by the server ID now why did I package a server ID along with the IP address uh, well in most cases LAN parties uh, if you're at a LAN party and you want to play with somebody else that ha is on another LAN party, and if your router is set up a specific way, 
everybody in that LAN party would have the same outgoing IP address. So that is why the server ID must also be included. Just in some cases, you might have the same IP address as somebody else connected. Maybe you're at the same house, you want to play with three people. Two of the p people are at the same house, they have a router, that router is set up with a internal IP address, what the 192.168 address, and the outgoing will still be one address. So that is why the ID, the server ID is also included. And let me go ahead and build this and I'll show you what else is included. All right, uh, for some cases you might want to, let me go ahead and mark this. In some cases you might want to send back to the original client uh, for confirmations or something. So that's default to false because most of the time you won't use that feature. When you send a message, that's it. You get the person's response. You don't get yourself as a response. Uh, the port number, the default port number is, I just made something up. That's what I use for my classes. It was a 490 class and we just used port 1490. So I've just been using that port every time. A uh, buffer size 248. Number of clients right now, the default value is two. So two people can only connect to this server. Okay, so now this server is a byte enabled, byte protocol enabled relay server. Now what this means is that when a new player, look at these four uh, features. When a new player joins, it will send out a message to every single client with this byte protocol. Now, depending on your application, you might want to use one. Uh, you might want to use something else. So it's a byte enabled. It's a byte protocol enabled server. So anytime a new player joins or disconnects, it will send a message to everybody else, everybody on the server, on what happened. Now this is useful for more than two people, uh, but two people can certainly benefit from this feature. So if you just have a two-player game, if you receive the byte protocol, and we'll get into that when we go into the game itself, but if you receive a message, the for a two-people game, you, re you receive a message, you know that somebody else connected because there's only two people playing. Uh, so we don't really need the byte protocol enabled server if there are just two people. I also updated this before I created this video. Uh, we enable sending of IP and ID with every message. This is default to true. So if you don't want the IP and ID, just set it to false and you'll be good to go. All right, so the source code will be available to you uh, maybe shortly. It's pretty well commented. Uh, we just use an encapsulated TCP listener and an encapsulated TCP client for most of this stuff. Rather than else is pretty self-explanatory. User received get mem we're using memory streams and read streams and binary writers and readers and all that stuff to write the message and read the message. Alright, so let's actually go ahead and demonstrate this relay server. Now, I do not have a game set up, and this is a pretty cool feature. If you're using Windows 7, if you go into Control Panel, and it, Windows Vista, I think, has this off by default as well. So if you go to Programs and Features, and if you are the admin of your system, you can add new features. And one of those features, well, I added both, a Telnet client and Telnet server. So let me, dem let me demonstrate what Telnet does. We're going to use the Telnet client. So what Telnet does is if we already have a server set up and we want to test that server, you do not have to create another application to test that server. 
telnet does that for us. Uh, we can also have a telnet server that we have a client and we want to test it with the telnet server. You can do it the other way. So if I open up the command prompt, now I say telnet space the address space IP address or I uh, port and then we connect. So now we see the IP, the port connected and now we have one connected client. Okay, so Telnet client allows us to test a already provided server. 127.0.0.1 is an IP loopback. That means that you are referring to this computer, the computer you are on right now. 127.0.0.1 is also equal to local host which also means you're looking at this computer right now. So that's why I used the 127.0.0.1 because the server is located on this computer. All right, so since this is built for more than one person, let's open up another command prompt. Uh, you can find this by going to start run and type in CMD and press enter and you'll get the command prompt. All right, so same thing. Once you enable that Telnet feature, you just type in Telnet, the IP address of the server, and the port of the server. Okay, so this client connected. All right, now I enabled the send message to client when a user is added to true. Okay, so let's look at the first client that connected. Oh, look at that, we got two smiley faces and the IP address and the port number 49639 that's the second connected client okay what are these two smiley faces well now we're getting into the command prompt the smiley faces are one because it's a new player protocol and the ID of one this is the ID of one of this client right here so everything I type in here will be transferred to this client here. But since I have a send message to, uh, if I, I have this enabled sending IP and ID with every message, that's set to true. So not only, if I type in hello, not only will hello display, but also the ID and IP of the person that's sending it. Now, Telnet is a little bit weird. When you type in hello, it will send H, it will send E, it will send L, it will send L, and it will send O. You do not type in hello, enter, and it will send hello. So if I press H, it sent H over here. Okay. Why didn't the ID come up here? It's because the ASCII character is zero. And I don't think there is any ASCII character representation of the number zero. But if I say H over here, I'll get the smiley face and the IP address. Uh, enter, enter, smiley face. I'm getting the smiley face because if I go into the command prompt and type in the ASCII character, the integer representation of the smiley face is one. So we're getting the correct representation. It's just the way the command prompt is set up. That's why this one has zero. It just doesn't display anything. Uh, but anyway, that's the relay server. This one sent hello and it sent H, I, P, E, I, P, L, I, P, L, I, P, O, I, P. All right, so once I disconnected the server, we had to disconnect every client. Okay, so last thing I want to discuss is the settings, how to change the settings of the server. So let's go ahead and when I give you the server, you will have access to the executable, 
and the config file. Just these two files here. The executable and the .config file. If you open up the .config file in any application, Notepad will work, you get an XML. And then you can modify the settings this way. So if I do not want to send the IP and ID with every message, I can set that to false. Be sure to save it, then you can close it and run the server. Now we see it's false. So let's go back. All right. Now I still have the send message to clients when, I, when a user is added. That's still true, and that sends the the protocol, which is one, the ID, which is one. That's why we had the two smiley faces again, and the IP address. But now, if I just say hello, we do not get that IP address on every single message. So that's all Relay Server does is just forward one message from one client to another client. And to spice things up a bit, I enabled these settings. And then you can actually do server maintenance, see who's connected. Uh, at this time, there's no way to kick anybody. I might make this a user interface server to where you can actually kick people off if you want to. But for right now, it's just a simple application that just notifies you. And let me actually connect to my other computer. So in order to do that, I need to get the IP address of this one. And this is an internal IP address, so you can't really do anything with this IP address. All right, so now I connected with a different computer and you see this IP address, connect with clients one. All right. Now this client is connected. So now let's write with the other computer. Hey. There you go. So you will have access to this relay server. This is what we will be using for every single networking tutorial and networking game that I create. And this will leave us open to the game itself instead of having to build a server. So just use this server. I'll release the source code next week. I'll need to do some modifications and you have access to the executable right away to play around with it. So anyway, I'll stay tuned for the continuation of the series. Next up we will be starting a game and that game will be a 2D space shooter game since I already have all the graphics ready to go on that game and uh, things like that. So I hope to see you next time.